Here goes. We've played a lot of games on Bullet Heaven, and every video delves deep into gameplay mechanics and score points in ways that some people have described as, quote, snore-inducing. But not this time. Sometimes an extremely simple set of rules is all that's needed to craft one of the most genuinely challenging games to see release in modern times. Enter Cuphead, a game that will most likely go down as the single most visually striking game of 2017. Released on September 29th of 2017 by Studio MDHR, Cuphead takes heavy inspiration from games like Gunstar Heroes and Alien Soldier, sorry George, then blends them into an awesome cartoon world straight out of the 1930s. How does it do this? Let's take a look. Everything that a player needs to know about Cuphead is explained in a brief tutorial that's available to be played right on the outside of the game. Players move Cuphead or his pal Mugman using the left analog stick or D-pad on an Xbox-style controller. Jumping is handled with the A button, while shooting is mapped to X. Players can also dash with the Y button, both on the ground and in mid-air. The dash is critical in making efficient progress in Cuphead, as well as collecting various pickups, parrying and evading specific enemy attacks. The B button gives players access to an EX move that can be activated when at least one card is obtained in the bottom corner's representative of the player's character. Up to five can be stored at a time. When supers are unlocked, the fifth card activates the super powerful technique instead. Players can equip two different weapons at once, which can be toggled with the left bumper. The player's EX move changes with the weapon chosen out of a total number of six, giving players a wide variety of weapons to experiment with between stages. After all, some weapons work better than others for certain bouts. In addition, players can lock their character in place while firing in any direction by holding down the R bumper as well. EX moves can also be aimed in this manner. Finally, as mentioned before, players have access to a parry function which allows players to immediately defeat or activate any enemy or obstacle in bright pink. Parry points can allow players to build up their EX gauge very quickly or reach hard to access areas, especially when collecting coins in run and gun sections. This is extremely helpful during boss fights and factors into a player's rank. Cuphead is a run and gunner at its core, featuring a number of side-scrolling gauntlet-style platforming stages and many, many boss fights. There's a huge amount of variety when it comes to Cuphead stages, and the vast majority will be played in a platformish manner. But the running gun stages aren't all Cuphead has to offer. A number of shmup bosses are also peppered throughout the game, making for a refreshing change of pace as players proceed. The controls differ slightly within these stages. The Y button will shrink the player, complete with tinier shots and increased speed while held. Shots are still mapped to X and EX shots and supers to B, however, parry is set to A instead of Y. Some of these stages are even more brutally difficult than the on-foot ones, so players will need to muster all their skill and pay close attention to parrying the right bits and avoiding the rest to make it through as unharmed as possible. Which in itself is extremely difficult to do. The average player will die hundreds of times during their playthrough, and that's not even counting the unlockable expert stages. As if Cuphead even needed it to be harder. Thankfully, additional dash moves abilities, health enhancements, and weapons can be purchased at pork rinds using gold coins found throughout run and gun stages, and even around the overworld to enhance the player's offensive and defensive power. All abilities both earned and purchased are equipped by way of a menu accessed with the Y button on the overworld. Now, Cuphead is pretty darn tough, especially since players can't progress through the game by defeating bosses in the easier simple mode. They have to be taken out on normal. But is it fun? Oh, definitely. There's incentive to do as well as possible beyond making it through the game, but a huge amount of patience is going to be required, even just to see the end. With four huge areas and 25 stages in total, there's a huge amount of gameplay with some secret requirements like pacifist runs and S-ranks requiring a lot of repeat practice and extra gameplay. There are also a number of secret objectives in the overworld as well, encouraging a healthy amount of RPG-style exploration. All in all, this equals a great amount of replay value for those with the will to further their skill. There's even a way to achieve 200% completion, adding even more gameplay to the mix. Two-player co-op also allows players to take on the game with a friend, though the game's difficulty scales up quite a bit with Mugman added to the mix. While the difficulty is definitely higher, players can parry a felled partner to resurrect them before they float off screen, and they'll return with one hit point. If one player misses the other, or if the defeated player is too far up the screen and floats off immediately, they can return by pressing start at the cost of 1 HP of their partner's health. Players can also see how far they've made it through any particular round, which does a good job of letting players know how good or bad they're doing at a glance, and in some cases keep them trying after just barely failing the stage. There's a lot to love about Cuphead, and there's a ton of gameplay to experience with the kind of challenge that makes for a decently long amount of gameplay as far as shooting games go. But what about scoring? 
Well, there isn't a lot to the game when it comes to scoring in the end, though what is here could be enough for the kind of game that Cuphead is. Cuphead doesn't have anything in the way of traditional scoring. That means no multipliers, no chains, no pickups, meddling, or bonuses. Players play purely for a letter rank, with speed of completion, life left, parries, coin collection, and skill level taken into account for the player's rating to a maximum of S. If a player can achieve a pacifist run in running on stages, a P rank will supersede S. Players are graded similarly with boss battles and aerial fights. The only difference is that the coin collection criteria is missing and replaced with a super meter score. So the more EX moves and supers that are used, the better. Beating a boss while hitting as many parries as possible and completing a no-miss run will earn the player the best rank. And that would be it. Of course, a letter rank may seem easy enough to do, but in practice it's much more difficult than players may think. However, there are some bonus features that require an A average, for example. And of course, there's bragging rights. But along with the lack of a traditional score, there are also no leaderboards as well. This takes out any online competitive edge. Even times could have been posted online with a small submenu in each stage showing the top performers. Regardless, Cuphead is plenty fun without being weighed down by an online competition. But beyond playability and fun factor, and beyond a letter rank score system, there's still one last thing that puts Cuphead way, way over the top. <laughs> There's no question about it, if Cuphead were presented in any other style, it'd just be yet another side-scroller, likely with some kind of 2D pixel art or 3D polygon style with little to no personality. A cheap 8-bit or synthwave soundtrack, typical effects, a general melange of blah. Instantly though, Cuphead made waves by featuring an amazing 1930s style of animation that conjured the kind of nostalgia that goes way, way back for people like us. There's no denying it, the visuals in Cuphead are the star attraction here, even more so than the gameplay mechanics beneath them. The visuals alone are what make Cuphead, Cuphead, and the amount of care and quality poured into the animation is just insane. This almost seems like an art project retrofitted into the Unity engine to bring it to life. Indeed, there's just nothing like directly controlling a genuine cartoon in real time, something that has, by and large, never really been done, especially on this level. Never mind that everything is exquisitely animated, the characters and enemy design is simply impeccable. There is very clear inspiration from many of early animation's greatest artists, and it shows. An equal amount of care was put into the backgrounds as well, including some incredible vintage stop-motion style sets and just the right amount of fade, color bleed, and film scratch. With the exception of a couple of effects, everything here looks and feels genuine in terms of animation and design. While we definitely appreciate that Cuphead runs solidly at 60 frames per second, if it ran at 30, 24, or even 14 as with many classic films, you'd barely be able to tell at a glance that it was a game at all. Little touches like how Cuphead's EX gauge is made up of cards in the suit of diamonds while Mugman's are suited in spades, and all of the tiny nuanced animations in the many, many boss encounters all adds up to perhaps the very best visual presentation you'll see all year. And there's definitely a lot of competition in that arena. Cuphead sounds are also everything you want out of a classic cartoon as well, with all kinds of slapstick effects used for everything from enemy entrance to impacts to shots, explosions, and reactions. Even the voices used have a certain old-timey feel, especially the announcer and Porkrine's excellent scratchy lines. <laughs> Cuphead's music is also suitably old-feeling with excellent big band, ragtime, and even barbershop quartet-style tunes that make for a great soundscape like nothing else you'll hear in a shooting or running gun style game. A persistent vinyl crackle and pop subtly enhances the vintage sound, making Cuphead sound even more authentic. However, there's some flourishes, like when paths open up after a boss is defeated, that sound a little more modern than the visual presentation, almost as if they come from the 60s. But this is a tiny complaint, and it is admittedly nitpicky, and in the end, completely inconsequential. The story and writing in Cuphead is pretty great stuff as well. The awesome storybook intro really sets the stage with a gambling-addicted Cuphead staking his soul for quick riches, directly against the advice of Mugman and with predictable results. With all kinds of old-timey slang and mannerisms, the characters you'll meet along the way are endearing and interesting to say the least. The interface and UI in Cuphead is as simple as it comes, with nothing in the way of complexity. This makes for a game that can be navigated through very, very easily. 
Just as with the rest of Cuphead, everything in terms of UI has an excellent vintage design that gives Cuphead yet another layer of believability. Steam achievements round out the experience on the whole, which also encourages extended play beyond the completion of the main game scenario. So, how does Cuphead stack up? Let's take a look. Cuphead's insane difficulty demands perfect control, which it has. Navigating the screen is sharp and intuitive to the point that dying never feels like it's anything but the player's fault. Cuphead might just be the hardest game of the year. It definitely doesn't pull any punches. It will definitely be too steep for novices at first, but the more practice that's put in, the better players will get. Cuphead is played over the course of 25 stages. With a wide variety of bosses and stage types, it feels fresh all the way through. Players can achieve a 200% completion rate, adding even more playtime to the mix. Without a doubt, the visuals in Cuphead are the main event here, expertly animated and detailed with timeless charm and personality. It's hard to stay mad at this game when everything is so incredibly drawn. Almost as great as the vintage visuals, Cuphead's sound is an excellent mix of big band, ragtime, piano, and barbershop quartet. Cuphead's sound effects are also suitably whimsical, slapstick, and well-implemented. Cuphead borrows a lot from games like Gunstar Heroes and Alien Soldier. In a lot of ways, it's very basic. But the way it lets its players feel like they're directly controlling a cartoon just hasn't been done like this yet. Cuphead is only about 20 US dollars, so players looking for a challenging game for less need look no further. With such an extensive amount of gameplay, $20 is a steal, even if it's only for the amazing visual presentation. Cuphead brings together three of my very favorite things, vintage 30s animation, shoot 'em up gameplay, and big band jazz music. For us, a better combination would be rare. As an art piece, Cuphead has it in spades. As a game, its daunting difficulty will test even veterans. This makes for an enjoyable, humorous, whimsical, but most importantly, fun experience. There's really something here for everyone, so long as they're willing to put the effort into it. And Cuphead gets a 5 out of 5. You can get a copy of Cuphead on Steam and on the Xbox Live Marketplace for around 20 US dollars. I don't know about you, but Cuphead is some of the most hilarious bosses we've seen in a while. Right? And the animation is incredible. It really takes you back to a time when the animation was something special. No question. It's a shame that the simple difficulty doesn't reward players with those contracts, but at the very least, it's an incentive to get better. Mm-hmm. This is definitely true. <laughs> 